When I switched over to placement, I made probably the most important discovery of this entire video. If you think you can use it by just pass leading the same way you do in classic, it actually makes deep passing worse. For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable mutt coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back money team and welcome to Madden 23. This is Mad Money Shot and today's video I'm going to be going over probably one of the biggest questions heading into the new Madden season and that's about the new passing system. Do any of these new passing systems give you a bigger advantage and if so how much of an advantage? Is it worth your time and energy to put into to learn this new system? Will it be around for a long time or will it be like some of the failed Madden systems of the past like the Vision Cone or the Total Control Passing from a couple years ago? I'm going to try to answer all these questions as well as show you guys how to use the new passing system system in this video but as always if you guys want to see Woo! more videos like this hit the like button let me know in the comment section and be sure to be a subscriber other than that it's going to get right into the video now the first thing you probably want to know is where to access the options to change your passing type when you start the game they'll make you go through a small tutorial and essentially choose but you could always change that by going to the little gear symbol at the bottom right corner and then going to game options which will allow you to scroll down to the skill based passing system options where you could change your passing type from placement and accuracy to just regular placement or classic mode which is essentially the mode that we've been using for the last couple of years with no real animations. You'll notice that it's when it's in classic mode that all these other options are grayed out. Whenever you switch to placement or placement and accuracy, all these options come back. Before I get into the specifics of these options, I think it's important to just go over what these passing types necessarily mean. There's always a written description in the top right corner that tells you exactly what these things will do. And I'll start with classic mode. Classic mode disables all the skill-based passing mechanics in favor of a classic Madden passing. So basically the way that we've been playing Madden for the last couple of years, it will look exactly the same if you disable it. And for my money, this will probably be the most used option. I think that most people will use this because they won't feel the most comfortable with some of the newer options. And I also think you can get by just fine. If you're, if you're halfway decent at Madden and you've been using this passing system for the last couple of years, I think you can use this in the new Madden and be perfectly fine. That's not to say that there aren't advantages to be had in the other systems. It's just that you don't have to feel like you need to use one of these systems to still have success in Madden 23. The next one is just placement. Now this is probably my favorite because I really didn't see a ton of benefits to placement and accuracy, but placement basically enables control over the placement of the pass within the target area, which they call the reticle, and finer control over pass strength. Now what you're going to see here is you're going to start seeing a reticle on the field or an area with a freeform control which essentially gives you a little more control or a little bit more visuals I should say on where the ball is going to be placed within that reticle. This particular passing system to me really just gives you a visual aid of what you already have if you're essentially using uh, classic mode. The only real difference to me is the freeform control which I'll go over later in this video. That's really the only benefit in my opinion although there's plenty of benefits to classic mode as well. The last one is placement and accuracy. Enables control over the placement of the pass within the target area and finer control over pass strength and accuracy. I don't know if it really makes that much of a difference. In placement you already had what I would consider like a power meter similar to you might see in NBA 2K when you're shooting the ball. This is pretty much going to be the exact same thing. You're going to have the same power meter only this time you're going to have three different areas light up. You're going to have a yellow area, a blue area, and a green area. You're going to want to try to get your accuracy into the green area so that you can ensure more accurate throws. But it even says in Madden 23 that if you don't hit that accurately enough it's not going to necessarily mean it's going to be an incomplete pass it's something that's going to be still somewhat random so even not hitting that green meter consistently isn't necessarily going to hurt you accuracy wise and i don't really see how much it's going to help either if that's the case i also find this to be confusing if not misleading uh, because ultimately you're not always trying to hit that green stripe if you're trying to throw a bullet pass like on a short crosser like i am here during a bullet pass you typically want to hold the button down to throw a faster pass that's how the function works so in this scenario it's best to try to hit that green stripe but at the end of the day you're not always going to want to throw a bullet pass so that green stripe can be misleading on this next play here i'm going to try to hit a lob pass and you're going to see all i'm going to do is tap the button so that's nowhere near the blue stripe that's nowhere near the accuracy meter that you would think that this is basically representing and at the end of the day i throw a perfect pass that drops right in the bucket and gets me an easy touchdown over the top of a cover one so to me the best passing type is either placement or classic 
But we're going to go ahead and go over these individual things that you can change. Now, you have the option to change your freeform reticle speed, which I haven't really gotten into yet. But think of this in terms of like Call of Duty when you're aiming your gun. You have the ability to change the access from going left to right, top to bottom. This here is set to default at a 7, and I think it's pretty much best to stay that way. Next up, you also have a passing slowdown, which really only works in offline modes like offline games and offline franchise. You can change it from slight to moderate to max. This is something I'm not going to go over too much because most people that watch my channel are probably online gamers and that really doesn't have much of an effect now the next one is probably the most impactful and that's the freeform reticle max distance so i guess it's the perfect opportunity to go over what is the freeform reticle and what is that have to do with this particular passing system at any point in time when this reticle comes up it's always going to be contained with inside that circle, with inside that target area. Unless you hold the L2 or the left trigger on Xbox, then you can freeform it outside of that circle, making for much wider passing angles and much more separation on certain pass plays. Now you have the option to change it from near, which is the default, to far or even no max distance, which to me, far and no max distance are insane. Far you can get away with, but no max distance, I have no idea what the uh, the capable function of that is, as it's just too hard to control and it really doesn't go anywhere near the receiver. Now the last thing is you actually have the ability to hide the reticle visibility and the meter visibility, which if you're going to use these passing meter functions, I don't see the point of hiding them. They're there to visually help you out. That's really the only difference between that and regular classic mode, so I don't understand why you'd want to hide them. So now that we went over everything you need to know, at the end of the day, this is still just my opinion. So I'm going to put this to the test. I'm going to throw 10 passes on each three passing type modes, and I'm going to see which one's the most successful. So we're going to start off with classic mode because this is the one that most people are probably going to use. The play I'm going to use is going to be the gun tight drive corner. This is basically a one-play touchdown against a lot of different plays, but it's really good against cover two. So we're going to pick Tampa two, and we're going to basically put this to the test. What we're going to do is we're going to essentially try to see which one of these passing types is the most effective at scoring one play touchdowns against this particular defense. All I really have to do is put the X route here on a streak and the Y route is going to be the read every single time. I'm not going to change anything because at the end of the day, this is a controlled experiment. The only caveat is that any pass that is affected by pressure or if I ultimately get sacked or hit when I throw, those passes don't count. It has to be a clean pass for it to count. Of the 10 passes that I threw on classic mode, four of them went for touchdowns which I thought was a pretty good number. When I switched over to placement, I made probably the most important discovery of this entire video, which is at the end of the day, if you're going to use this type of passing, you can't use it like classic. If you think you can use it by just pass leading the same way you do in classic, you're not gonna get any benefit. It actually makes deep passing worse. You can see here that I have a lot of separation between the receiver and the cornerback. And because of the circle, the target area is so confining, the receiver has to slow down to catch the ball. By the time he catches it, the DB has caught up because of that slowdown, and I have no ability to run after the catch to get away from the defender. In fact, I only scored two passing touchdowns this way without using the freeform reticle, which ultimately caused me to start over and do the 10 throws again this time i made sure that i used the freeform passing reticle on every single play so once again once this ball is thrown i'm going to hit the l2 or the left trigger and move this out away from the target area and you're going to see that i actually had quite an improvement when it came to passing and much more space for a bigger catch and run plays at this point it didn't change a ton if you remember i said when i used the classic mode i threw four touchdowns on 10 passes when i went with this one and i, I started using the freeform reticle it went up to five uh, but at the end of the day, that's that's still an improvement. I mean, one touchdown a game is a huge improvement. It's a seven-point improvement. So at the end of the day, to me, it's worth it. But if you're not really comfortable doing this, if you're not really comfortable learning this system or putting the time in, you're fine with classic mode. You're really only one touchdown behind, and it's still going to have a lot of success in Madden 23, although I do think this new passing feature is probably the future when it comes to future Madden games. So at some point, you're probably going to have to learn it. So that's it. That's the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, hit the like button let me know in the comments section other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below